Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the NBA front office show. I'm Trevor Lane. Find me over on X at Trevor underscore Lane on Instagram and threads at Trevor Lane NBA. Joined by Keith Smith at Keith Smith NBA across platforms. We have a lot to talk about today. And Keith, I discovered since we started using our new intro that the intro music, it, it gets permanently <laughs> stuck in, in my head. So that's that has been on loop for the last few days now. Yeah, it is catchy for sure. I, I find myself dancing a little bit, dude, doing a little chair dancing uh, <laughs> while, while it's going on here. So pe people will probably catch me as we come out because it just kind of ends and then it's like right to us. Yep. So it's like, you know, at least um, when we do the Friday live shows. And again, let me reconfirm for those who missed it. The Mega Man music will stay with yes. the live shows. We are not going away from it. Uh, we, we love it, too. So it will stay. Um and uh but I, I at least that one gives you like the little countdown so like i'm like all right time to get serious and get ready here and not act like a goofball so i'm, I'm gonna edit it so we go from the Mega Man music into that and it'll okay. just be catchy nice. music overload for the there we go. perfect that's, that's, that's yeah. the plan that's and then the people plan. will put in the comments when is this thing gonna actually start what are these guys doing <laughs> that's why there's a countdown though <laughs> right people yeah know. exactly People yeah, know when it's actually sure. coming on. Uh, gives everybody a chance to jump in. But speaking of which, we'll we'll go back to doing a live show this coming Friday. We'll do one um, and have everybody come in, ask questions, comments, all of that good fun. For today, we've got plenty of news to get into, uh, particularly of the weather-related variety. By this evening, it is in southwestern Georgia. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Yeah. James Harden, for those comments that you heard in the in the drop about Daryl Morey and about never being a part of an organization that he is with, he has been fined the maximum allowed by the NBA at one hundred thousand dollars. Keith, is this a mighty duck situation where a la the Hawks, James Harden says one hundred thousand dollars, well worth it? Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah, I think he's basically going to be like, okay, whatever. Like you, okay, it is what it is, right? And we're gonna move on, and this is all part of his plan to make things uncomfortable, right? He mm -hmm. said that was what he was gonna do, and, and we'll see, you know, kind of how that all all comes together here, and what else that may be. Um, I, for anybody who's really interested, I over on Spot Track, I broke down in great detail, kind of how we got here, what's going on now, what the fine was for. What happens if Harden does follow through and sits out uh, where we might go, why there hasn't been a trade yet. And I kind of tried to dispel the notion of the 76ers are trying to have double max cap space next summer. Cause that's not really a thing, mm -hmm. um, which we talked about on the show before, but I broke all that down in great detail um, over on spot track. The article is up now, but one of the things I said in there is he said he was going to make it uncomfortable. Is this just the start? Like, is he going to keep pushing? Because if he keeps pushing and says, hey, there was a, you know, they actually did promise me a max deal. And if I opted out and all these kind of shady dealings, that's a problem, right? And then that'll be an even bigger issue. And the, the NBA will come down on the Sixers hard. There's no sense that's where this is going yet. So we'll see. But for now, yeah, $100,000 fine for James Harden. And we'll see where it goes from here. And I think it's worth mentioning that this fine is not – for James Harden calling Daryl Morey a liar, right? right? It's not, the NBA isn't trying. I've saw people out there. Why is the NBA sticking up for Morey and things? Like, that's <laughs> yeah. not what's happening here. This is James Harden is being fined for threatening to withhold services, for threatening right. to withhold living up to his end of the contract. That's the NBA's concern here. Not that Daryl Morey was 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 wronged in any kind of way. It's the it's the threat here that he's not going to perform and not going to live up to his contract. That was the the issue. So. That's where, where the fine is coming from. So I know people point to like past situations. Well, what about this guy? What about that guy? It's specifically because Harden said he would not take take part in the organization. Yeah, and to, to that point, a couple other things with that. And I think the initial reporting got a little messy mm -hmm. with that. And that's why people jumped on always being fined for the liar comments. But you're absolutely right. He's being fined for the with saying he will withhold services if he's not traded. A couple people asked, and it's a great question. There is the new language in the CBA where if you publicly demand a trade, you can be um, fined up to 150000 that's not what he did, right? They're not saying they, he didn't 
demand a trade. He's just basically saying, I'm never going to be a part of an organization Daryl Morey's a part of again. Mm -hmm. And that's what the NBA came down on him for. Is it semantics? Absolutely. But, you know, well, what do they say? Technicality is the soul of the law. Like, that's where we're at with this um, sort of stuff. So, yeah. Now, the, now we're getting a lot of spillover into yeah, well, why did why was Damian Lillard not fined, and why was there the memo and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. Well, Damian Lillard wasn't fined because all that stuff was new and was all being you know disseminated. Damian Lillard also didn't say those things. Mm-hmm. Um, it was his agent who said, you know, hey, if you trade for him, there's going to be problems. And it's funny because then people are like, nobody cared when Anthony Davis did it. Nobody cared when Charles Barkley did it. And it's like, depending on age, how far back they go. Sure. But the reality is they don't, I can re- what are they, you know, retroactively punish teams for stuff that happened, you know, anywhere from five to 20 years ago. No, that's not how it works. It's we've evolved. We changed the rules changed and now we're at where mm-hmm. we're at. So with this, yeah, if Harden comes out this afternoon and says, I want to trade. Yeah, he's then he's probably going to be dinged an additional 150k on top of what he's already been hit with. And then the other part of this too is because people keep saying, well, Ben Simmons didn't get in trouble. Well, Ben Simmons was one, a very complicated situation because he was claiming his absence was for medical reasons. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. But the other part of it was um, different world, right? We're in a different world than we're in a year ago uh, when all the Simmons stuff was going on. So that's just kind of, you know, some, some of the differences with, with these situations and all this now added to this. I don't know if you saw this, Josh Harris, the Sixers owner came out and said, we're trying to get him back. Like we want to keep him here. We want him, you know, to stay in Philadelphia. Now to be fair, he was kind of asked that on the fly while he was at a Washington commanders game, which is a team he also owns um, there in the NFL. And he was asked that, that question. So that's become like a whole, whole other like thing to this is like, you know, does that mean I saw a speculation? Well, Josh Harris will just fire Daryl Morey and it'll mm-hmm. all be fine and all that. I don't know that that's going to actually change anything necessarily. I, I just think it's, you know, this is a mess. That's exactly, there's no other way to describe it. It's just a mess. Yeah. Here's what Harris said. The direct quote, I respect James. I want to obviously accommodate what he wants, but at the same time, I have to think about a championship contending team, what we can get back. I'd love to convince him to stay. I understand that that's not what he wants to do right now. He's going to keep trying to resolve uh, it in a way that everyone can live with and is positive for everyone, whatever that resolution is. He went on to explain again that he respects him. He said multiple times he respects James Harden. Um, so, yeah, he's I mean, this is kind of the spot the 76ers are in. Are you better off trading James Harden for the poo poo platter? And and then you are locked into, OK, this is what we are getting. And now we've got an upset Joel Embiid. Or are we better off taking the chance that maybe somehow we convince James Harden to stick it out for another year? And he's a better player than anybody that we can get back. And we try to contend again this year, which pacifies Embiid to a degree. And then next summer, we can have cap space to at least chase a few players or, or one player, go after whatever. We have some flexibility next summer. And then James Harden can go his separate way at that point. That's, that is, I think, the preferred path here for the 76ers. And that's what Josh Harris is saying. Look, if we can figure out a way to just talk him into coming back, then one more year, we'll do that. And that's probably the best path forward if we want to continue con- to contend because the offers that are out there right now, they probably knock the Sixers out of contention. Yeah, and anybody who says they're not contenders anyway, that's the definition thing, right? Well, they, they have a puncher's a chance. Contender? Yeah, exactly. I think you know they could get through the East with their roster pretty much as it's made up today if you know they got there healthy and Harden wanted to be engaged. My worry would be all you got to do is just go Google James Harden yes. last Nets game versus Kings Ooh. and see what it looked like. He played 37 minutes, and this is probably one of the few times I would say this. I might have been able to perform better um, <laughs> on an NBA floor, and that's that's saying quite a bit because he just – how he even played 37 minutes is beyond me. Like he just really went through the absolute, went through the motions. There was a lot of times – stood around, barely got over half court, going on both ends of the floor, just a complete mess of a game. And that's that's what I would be kind of, you know, I, I, I would have somebody slipping uh, copies of those videos into the Sixers front office, uh, you know, daily and pu- pl- plugging it up on their playlist each morning. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, this is what you're looking at if you don't trade me. Like, you're, you're going to get performances like this if they even put them on the floor. So, so we'll see, but we're – 
you know, it sounds crazy to say this because it's August and we still have a month of the off season to go, but that's it. We've got a month of the off season to mm-hmm. go. Like we're, we're starting to get down to it. If not fully down to it, as far as timing goes on these kinds of things. Urgency is what creates moves, what creates deals. And as we get closer to training camp, you're going to see urgency both on that front and the front of the, the Damian Lillard trade, which we'll be talking about in just a bit here. Um, so, yeah, the push is going to come to shove really quick here for the James Harden situation, for the Damian Lillard situation, and we'll have to see ultimately where this goes. Uh, and Harden did the same thing, by the way, in Houston. So he was yep. lollygagging just a little bit, as if I can sound as old as possible, um, <laughs> it, it, when he was with the Rockets as well. So that's something. That made me think of Major for. League. You're a bunch of lollygaggers, <laughs> lollygagging around the field. <laughs> that's a good that. movie. That's I think that's movie. when he has a heart attack, right? I think is in the middle of. I think yeah, so. When he's yelling at everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. What a All right. <laughs> Let's talk about another rumor here before we get to the the dames of our lives. Uh, JaVale McGee, according to Mark Stein, uh, the Mavs are not going to move forward with JaVale McGee. That if they don't find a trade for him by the end of the month, the end of August, they are going to wave and stretch him. Um, they'll stretch him out over a five year, five year stretch because it's double the amount of years left on the contract. Plus one, he's got two years left under contract, five years stretch. It'll be just over $2 million of a cap hit dead money on the books for the Mavs. If they do this, uh, Keith, look, we never said that. We thought the Suns were probably going to wind up just parting ways with Chris Paul. And then suddenly a trade appeared and they managed to work something out. Uh, JaVale, it's possible that a, a Lillard thing pops up, a, a Harden sure. trade pops up, and they use his salary and deal, and, and and off we go that way. But I do think that with the clock ticking, he probably gets waved and stretched here. Yeah, I, I just it, unless there's something bigger, like you said, to jump in as a third team in a yeah. deal or to just you know something comes out of nowhere. Javale McGee's stature at this point of his career is not such that teams are going to be banging down the door to acquire him on his current deal. I think once he is waived in stretch, a veteran minimum deal, yeah, they'll probably get one of those. I think there's a handful of teams that would say, yeah, well, we'd love to have him come in and be our you know, third center or whatever it mm-hmm. is, the locker room vet. He's a guy most people seem to love to have around and those sorts of things. And Dallas, this is really a an admission of we made a mistake. Right. Yeah. We, we, this was a blown signing. Uh, why they gave him a player option in the third year of that original three year right. deal that that makes this a mess even more. Because if that was a team option or a non guarantee, you could get out of it just owing him the 5.7 and you could eat it all right now if you wanted to, or just stretch it. You'll just stretch that portion. If yeah. it was non guaranteed, you could stretch that 5.7 over five years because the non guaranteed year counts. If it was a team option, you'd decline it, and then you'd stretch the five point seven over the three years. But wait, the the non guarantee. You know, so if he had, so if he had sorry, three just million to, in dead money on the books. So if he was, so you're saying if so, the, say his contract. Just for my own education here, Javale sure. McGee, if he's under contract, five point seven million this year, six million next year. But that six million was non guaranteed, and they were to waive and stretch him. The stretch would not include the six million dollar non guarantee, but they would still be allowed to stretch him for the five yep. years. Yeah, because it counts over the year that. contract. Yeah, because that counts as a year under contract. There's just no money attached to that uh-huh. year. But yeah, yeah. That's um. There was uh, very famously the Celtics the year they were doing everything to get Gordon Hayward, and then ultimately ended up getting Kyrie Irving. They waived and stretched Demetrius Jackson, and part of what they did was they picked up a team option to turn it into a non-guaranteed year so that they could stretch him over. I believe it was seven years uh, total because wow. because he, he had three years left on or two, two years left on the contract or whatever. Three years left on the contract was what it was uh, once they picked that up and then turned it into non-guaranteed. So, yeah, and he's like on the books for like $97,000 a year mm-hmm. for one more year, and then it's done. So, yeah, so they're going to have five, five years of $2.3 million mm-hmm. in dead money on the books. Kind of is what it is, I guess, for for Dallas. But and then the other piece that goes along with this, they're going to use that roster spot to re-sign Markeith Morris. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it'll be on a uh, non-guaranteed uh, contract. He'll come back to the team. He was traded there with Kyrie uh, from Brooklyn, and they're going to bring him back in. And I think that's essentially, hey, well, you're you're replacing um, 
JaVale McGee as our veteran backup big, but you can also play the four where JaVale can only play the five. That's I think that's so telling with how the Mavs actually feel about JaVale McGee. You know, we talked about this over on Lakers Nation because, of course, a lot of Lakers fans said, well, just sign JaVale, right? Um, Jason Kidd knows JaVale McGee about as well as anybody, right? I mean, if anybody's going to get the best out of JaVale, it's Jason Kidd. Yeah. And he couldn't get on the floor for him. The Mavs, they've got two more years under contract with him, and they've decided that the gap between JaVale and Markeith Morris is enough that they would rather pay JaVale McGee to not play basketball for them and have that dead money sitting on their books that that is the more attractive option in order to bring in Markeith Morris rather than just to keep JaVale McGee. And this is a Mavs team who we've known is has been looking for a center. Yeah. You see, you add all of that up, and that tells you the Mavs are really, really out on, on JaVale McGee. Yeah, it's not like it's uh, Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid as the first and second string centers and he yeah. can't break through, right? I mean, all due respect to Dwight Powell and Maxi Kleba, who plays a lot at the five for them, and Derek Lively, the rookie. Like, it, those are guys where if JaVale McGee was – was worth the five million, and then the or I guess it's like five and change, and then six million. He's getting paid uh, the next two seasons. They just keep him. They, their their determination is we blew that signing a year ago. It's not worth it. And to your point, yeah, it is worth it enough to us to eat that money to bring in Markeith Morris for an end of the bench, you know, break glass type of type yeah. of role uh, versus that. And that that is a great point you made too. Cause that's where, you know, my saying is they're more name than game. Sure. Right. And that's like, this is a good example of it. Like people see it and like, Oh, they should go get them. Cause I know Lakers fans have an attachment to them. Cause there's a yeah, history absolutely. there. Nostalgia. But I saw fans from like seven or eight teams, like including Celtics fans, which I get a lot of in my mentions, like Boston should take a shot on him. He's pretty good. And it's like, is he? He was like, you know, he was like once upon a time, but you know, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, to, to quote Moneyball here. Uh, there, there's a time that comes for all of us where we can no longer play the children's game. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where we're at with this. So I, I think we're, he'll catch on somewhere, but my, my thoughts of how many meaningful, impactful minutes JaVale McGee will play. It's less than 50 all season long. This this was my advice for, for Lakers fans, that if you're going to get JaVale McGee, that's fine if he's your fourth big. If he's your sure. third big and you're going to expect him to be part of the rotation, yeah, you you probably need to look elsewhere at, at this stage in his career. That's a great point, yeah. because And especially, too, with the Lakers, you need a better option when AD is out than, mm -hmm. all right, here's JaVale McGee for 30 minutes tonight. Yeah. Like That's pro probably not going to gonna go all that well. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah, if he's your your – deep bench big sure yo go go that direction no no problem with that i would honestly i know maybe this will people get really upset about this i did i just bring back Wendy and gabriel like uh, yeah. i think he's a more impactful player at this point than what jamil javel mcgee is gonna be all right let's jump over to uh the and i agree with with that we talked about that on lakers nation last night actually but um let's talk about the the knicks the knicks are suing the Raptors, which Keith, I, I'm trying to come up with a dinosaur pun because I'm pretty sure like the famous T-Rex skeleton is named Sue. Yeah. Um, so there's is, right. So there, there's there should be something. I can't find where to land on that, but there should be something in there. Um, but the Knicks are, are suing the Raptors for an employee who left the Knicks and allegedly took sensitive information uh with them and were and supplied that to the Toronto Raptors. Th this could get Kind of messy, something interesting that you don't see happen very often. But I guess in today's day and age, when all, things are so digital, you could see where it'd be a possibility. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name because I'll, I'll butcher it and I don't want to be you know rude uh, to, to the gentleman. But essentially what happened was a former Knicks uh, employee, it's a little nebulous, and this is happening within the league. It used to be the video staff reported really to the coaching staff they, they were considered a part of the coaching staff because mm -hmm. they were basically videoing everything for the coaches and breaking down clips and all that stuff um what's happened now is 
there's some in some organizations, and I don't pretend to know how the Knicks are set up. Some of those guys, it's like a dual role, or some are they're just like an employee and they report to both the front office and the coaching staff. But anyway, what he's accused of doing, what this lawsuit alleges, is that he made it known he was taking a job with the Raptors. And when it was he was taking a job with the Raptors, he downloaded thousands, over 3,000 files. And these are clips and game plans and season plans and all this stuff and took them with him to the Raptors. And then uh, the other portion of it is he's also alleged to, at the direction of the Raptors, to have continued to sign into various accounts that the Knicks had provided him with access to in order to pull information out of those accounts. Mm. We'll find out where all this goes. Um, this is this to me though, this is ugly because generally things like this would be team a has a complaint against team B. They take it to the league and the league handles it. However, the league sees fit to handle it. This obviously either was we're skipping the league and we're going right to a lawsuit or the league said, man, we're, we're going to handle it by not handling it. And that's going to be, be how it goes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, one of those things where this has potential to get ugly. And I was talking to some folks over the last couple of days about it. And they said, yeah, like it's going to get really messy with like people move around and they change jobs in the NBA way more than I think people realize, especially the uh, kind of, you know, non-known staffers, which there are hundreds of on every team. There's going to be a lot of people who are like, uh, hey, like, oh, you're leaving? Great. You're locked out of everything now. Yeah. Like, your, your, your two weeks, go spend it at home, right? Or whatever it may be and uh, however it is. And it's just going to be very interesting to see how this, what the ramifications are, what the, the play here is. Does the league get involved now that there is a lawsuit? And does the league hand punishment down to Toronto on this if it can all be proven? So I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on this as it kind of moves forward. I saw people saying, well, the, the Raptors should have to give the Knicks a draft pick or or something like that. And I'm like, that's not really how yeah. that like sometimes you you may have a team lose a draft pick. That that can happen. But it's rare that you see something like, and I can't think of a situation where we've ever seen it, where the league takes a draft pick away from one team and gives it to another team like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. I can't even remember when one of those has happened in the NBA. And, and I know some people think that's what happened in the, uh, when Doc Rivers left the Celtics to coach uh-huh. the Clippers. That was a trade. And then the NBA very, very, uh, basically made it known to teams no more, we're not, no more of these. We're not going to approve any more coach trades and all that stuff. We don't want them being a thing that's not a thing that that our CBA covers because it's coaches and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think if anything, yeah, if the Raptors lose a pick here, they'll just straight lose it. It'll much mm-hmm. be like a tampering thing. But I think we're we're, we're too far out from even knowing you know, what kind of punishment will come down with all this. But it's definitely an interesting kind of thing and something that we don't see very often. No. Yeah, absolutely. Be something to keep an eye on for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lonzo Ball did confirm that he is unfortunately out for the season. However, he also clapped back at Stephen A. Smith and was pretty determined to to say that he is coming back. He's not done. Um, he was standing up and sitting down using just his surgically repaired knee on that in that chair because apparently Stephen A. Smith said something about how Lonzo was having trouble even sitting down and. Yeah, he has like, trouble getting out of a chair. Trouble getting out of a chair, yeah. yeah. And that's uh, and Lonzo wanted to prove him wrong, so he jumped on a video. It was kind of funny. Uh, but, I mean, also, for me, from my perspective, who's somebody who wants to see Lonzo Ball play basketball again, that was kind of uplifting, too, because I went, okay, sure. you know, he's not – this isn't this isn't Lonzo saying, yeah, I don't know if I'm coming back. Like, he was saying, no, I am coming back. Uh, it's just, it's just not going to be this season. Yeah, the exact quote in, in this, I don't know if it was TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, wherever Lonzo Ball shared it was, Stephen A., who are your sources, bro? You got to stop yapping. I'm coming back, man. Come on. And while he said these things, he was repeatedly standing up and sitting down on just one leg, um, just his left leg, uh, do, do, doing that over and over and over again. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to take that as, you know, because I want to be optimistic that Lonzo's doing all right. I'm going to take that as, Hey, Lonzo's knee is at least good enough to do that. Maybe, you know, we will see him back. But the bummer is he confirmed he's out. I highly recommend people go and listen to the entire interview he did, which is what kind of sparked him being in the mm-hmm. news cycle. Uh, because one of the things he talked about was like how 
we had like the perfect team for him. He did. I'm paraphrasing his quote, but was like, we'd built the perfect team of the bulls for me. We had shooting and scoring and we were playing mm-hmm. fast and all those things. And then just fell apart. And I think it has been lost a little bit to history. That bulls team before he got hurt fun. was real. And they re- were really good. Mm-hmm. They were leading the Eastern conference for a while. Then it all just kind of went sideways. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that, all right, let's, one more year out and then he gets back on the court and he's still young enough that he could still give us, you know, five, six years. I always think about Sean Livingston, right? We oh, all wrote him knee. off. Yep. And then he came back to play, you know, multiple impactful, really important uh, years with the Warriors as they kind of came to prominence and won their first round of titles. All right, Keith, let's take a trip back in time. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. The dames of our lives, Damian Lillard, (laughs) trade talks. Well, maybe business is about to pick up, to steal a quote from the legendary JR. All right, let's go with... Trade talks for Lillard picking up as we get closer and closer to uh, the season starting up, which is it's what we've been saying. The season starting up training camp coming around. That is going to create urgency. Deadlines create action. And I think that's what we're going to see here. We're going to see the Miami Heat. We're going to see the Blazers, I think, to a lesser degree, are going to be motivated by the coming season. And it is expected that the Heat and Blazers will start to actually engage in trade conversations in the next few weeks here. Yeah, and to be fair, Joe Cronin, the Portland Trailblazers general manager, said in July, this may take months. Hey, basically, I'm not going to rush this. And as I you know, said on the last time we talked about this, you only get to trade them once. you got to get it right. So I think what's really important here with this one is, yeah, it's we're, we're, we're a month out, essentially. I'm going to keep saying a month. It's really like five weeks or whatever, and maybe a couple more mm-hmm. days from training camps opening. But it's it's really like we're a month out. And we're definitely a month out from guys really filtering back into the home markets and into the facilities for informal workouts and all that stuff. So so we'll, we'll, we're going to you know keep an eye on this and see if, you know, have over the last month or so has – Miami figured out, all right, we think we have something in place to go get additional assets and where, where does all this kind of come together? But I continue to believe whether it be Damian Lillard, James Harden, I think they'll both be on new teams in advance of the start of the season, just because no one's going to want to deal with all that nonsense, you know, as you're starting everything. And from the coaching side, if I'm a coach, I don't want to come in with like, all right, well, now I have to kind of have two plans for mm-hmm. training camp, right? And I want to come in knowing, all right, these are my guys. These are my roster. Me and my staff can get together, and this is how we're going to start breaking out our groups and our position work and our coach assignments um, and all those things to each individual player. And let's just get going with all that. So so I th- think we're going to get there. But, yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting into time. Also, for those who don't know, what kind of happens in the NBA is summer league ends. And usually within a week or two after that, everybody pretty much goes off on vacation and Mm -hmm. calls it good for month, month and a half. And then they kind of get back to work. You'll see stuff and there'll, there'll be, you know, minor signings will trickle out. And sometimes, you know, prominent free agents is still hanging out there and they sign or something a little bit later into the summertime. But for the most part, this is the dead period. And then it starts picking up, you know, right around the beginning part of September, generally right around after Labor Day. Yep. Which is maybe poor timing, but it's right when I'm going on vacation, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have something worked out so that, uh, that everything could still run smoothly. Yes. All right. Let's talk a little bit about my guy, Austin Reeves. The Spurs considered two different offers for Austin Reeves, one a three-year deal, one a four-year deal that would have been $100 million. The three-year deal would have been about $60 million. The Spurs, this is what we heard at the start of free agency, that it was the Spurs or bust for Austin Reeves because the Houston Rockets had already committed money to Fred Van Vliet. And so it was down to the Spurs. Now, there was never a lot of doubt that the Lakers would match it. There were some rumblings that maybe they could be kind of scared off by a big offer, but... From what I heard inside the Lakers, it's it was pretty certain they were going to be hanging on to him. Um, so for a team like the Spurs, they just had to consider, do we want to mess up the Lakers' future cap space? And what's the expense for us to do so? Because they know they're almost certainly not getting the player. 
Yeah, and we talked about it at the time, and one of the things we talked about was, like, where is San Antonio going if they don't go this direction? Mm -hmm. They chose to eat contracts, essentially, instead of what it would have cost them to bring bring in Austin Reeves, to, to some extent. That's, that's a little unfair, but it's it's not far from the truth. I'm on that because remember with the Spurs, if and we're just going to call it four years, $100 million. It was it, It's not quite that, but yeah. we'll, we'll call it four years, $100 million. They would have been on the hook for, um, you know, however they, they structured it, including $25 million a year if that's where they wanted to go. Lakers would have been on the hook for that, you know, the, the kind of, I like to call it the goofy, you know, small, small, the balloon, big, big, yep. um, you know, uh, salaries. And then it was also, this was the first time I, and this came from Jovan Buha, the athletic. This was the first time I have read that they also considered doing a three year, 60 million yeah. uh, type of offer sheet too, which would have also come with a small, small, big jump, just would have been less of one. I, you know, if I'm San Antonio, I think I would have rather have had Austin Reeves than eating uh, the guys it's not like they got incredible value for eating those contracts either but i kind of get it you know from from their standpoint of like hey we wanted to see what else we could do and you know where else we're gonna kind of go with this um we we kind of i think at this point i'll know at some point austin reeves was like all right man like i've got this lakers offer like i'm happy to stay here but like crap or get off the pot right let's yeah let's go with this and then you know, it just kind of became, all right, I'm going back to the Lakers. And in all things considered, for a dude who's made nothing in his career, relative speaking, in NBA terms, he, he came out great with this. Oh, yeah. and, he, and he got everything he could possibly get right in the deal as far as, you know, player option, he got a trade bonus. He's, he, he's in really good shape. And if he continues to uh, develop and become the player, it looks like he's becoming and, you know, plays well. Um, he'll opt out of that player option. He'll make a ton of money in that year too. And, you know, he's going to be fine. He's set for life anyway. Just, you know, more, more, my criticism is just, I don't know if I was as far as I think it would have just gone for it and maybe the Lakers match. And, but what were you, who cares if they tied up your cap space for a day? Like that wasn't, what was it? What were you going to do in that one day? Like I, that's the part I don't understand. Well, well, Bill Simmons is certainly upset about it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I did but, see those tweets. But that's that's that, essentially opponents. that's that was the decision the, the Spurs had to make. But and you could say the same thing. And I know because it's the Lakers, it gets a much brighter spotlight. Sure. Why didn't anybody do it with Herb Jones? Right. Like yeah. it's it's the same it's the same situation. So I, and I said at the time, you remember, right? I was like, and I, I think I called out the Spurs, the Rockets. Like yep. these teams should be jumping in. Like if I'm the Rockets and I gave Dylan Brooks what I gave him, and I get Dylan Brooks as a for all his flaws is a better offensive player than Herb Jones sure. is right now. Um, and I, I tend to think Herb Jones is probably a much better defender. I, mm -hmm. Even though Brooks is a very good defender, I would have thrown for half the money that they paid uh, Dylan Brooks. I would have given, given that offer to, yep. you know, Herb Jones and, you know, maybe, maybe you don't go the full 400, but you know, go 480 or something like that. Cause nothing says you had to go all the way to the max you could offer me either. Right. You could, uh, go go in, you know, do, do a little less. So, yeah, I, I think I would have, I, I don't know, I would have been in play if I was those guys. You know, make these teams sweat, at least make them match. You know, and then, then if nothing else, if I'm the Spurs or the Rockets, I take two other Western Conference teams and I screw up their cap sheet yeah. a couple years from now with you know, more money than what they wanted to pay for those guys. But, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like there was a lot of time for the Spurs to come up with an offer either. Because mm -hmm. the Lakers had nothing to negotiate. It yeah. was here's everything. This is everything we can legally give you. Yeah. You want you want a you want a trade kicker? Cool. You want a player option on the last year? Cool. We'll give you everything we possibly yep. can. And and now we're just waiting. It's it's in your court. We're waiting. And that puts you know pressure on Austin. Hey, I've got this deal sitting out here. What do we, you know, what do we do? Um and, and so there wasn't a lot of time for the Spurs to really construct an offer and and come up with something either. So all of this played out, but I, I know the sentiment from the side of Austin Reeves was, yes, maybe we could have gotten more if we had gotten an offer from the Spurs and then we forced the Lakers to match that or whatever. Um, but had someone told them a year ago that they were that he was going to be getting this, you know, four years, fifty six million dollars, they would have been over the moon, losing yeah. their minds, excited, and so they yeah. decided to frame it in that in that way, like this is amazing, this is great, we're in a great situation. Let's just let's move forward. Yeah, he was where he wants to be too. Yeah. He, he was very clear, you know, throughout I think the entire process of like, hey, if I end up somewhere else, I end up there. 
but I really I wanted to be with with the Lakers and he was on a on a really good team has a great role with that team and you know and he got paid yeah you can't you can't you, there's nothing to be upset with there if you're Austin Reeves I think you know be be very happy with with you know what what he did just yeah Spurs Rockets teams with cap space. You know, you, you could have made the Lakers sweat. And to your point, you should have done the same thing with Herb Jones yeah. too. Like, you know, but and and I guess for me, these are not like Tyler Johnson and Alan Crabb and a couple of those mm. ones back in the day. Yeah, that's a throwback, like, Alan Crabb. Those, those were weird offer sheets because mm-hmm. those were guys who were like, they're really going to be that good. Like, you feel pretty confident at the bare minimum. Austin Reeves is a high end six man at the the, the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think he's probably a pretty good starting guard um, for most teams. And I feel like Herb Jones is that's an all defense wing. You know, like like you're you're you know, you're, you're paying for guys that are going to deliver on what you pay them. Yeah. I mean, and, and you weren't even going to be stuck with the 30 plus million dollar years. Right. You you, you would have been down you know, far less than that. So that that's where I guess I just you know, missed opportunities. Maybe you know, just didn't want to go. And I think with Herb Jones. That one probably was slightly different because it was probably, hey, we're declining your thing because we're going to immediately sign this deal. Right. right. So it, know, so there wasn't going to be a Carlos Boozer or whatever, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, yeah, still somebody somebody should have made him sweat a little bit or make him work. But yeah. Alas, we move along. All right. Uh, let's jump over to your Celtics. They are working out some forwards. What's what's going on there? I don't even know off the top of my head. How many roster spots do the Celtics have right now? Two. Two. Yeah, they did two, two on the regular season roster. Um, they still still are sitting on two spots, so uh, they're going to bring in T.J. Warren, who played last year for the Nets and the Suns. Uh, he ended up going with Kevin Durant uh, back to the Suns, which is kind of funny because he that's where he was mm-hmm. initially, um, way back in the day. And then uh, Lamar Stevens, who is with the Cavs. Lamar Stevens, one of the contracts the Spurs ate a portion of, a very small guaranteed portion, and then they waived him. And then they're also going to bring in uh, Lewis King, um, who had been on a two-way with the uh, 76ers last year. He's also been on a uh, with the Kings in the past. Uh, bringing in some forwards, going to take a look at him and see. I, I'm kind of fine with it. I think T.J. Warren last year just – I don't know if it's the foot is still never going to be right or if he just lost – quickness first step acceleration whatever it is he just doesn't really look like the same guy um that, that he was and I'm, I'm kind of a little bit discounting the bubble uh tj warren because i was like if, if you could get him on the minimum he was amazing that's you know that's the mvp signing of the summer um but if but you know just even what he was prior to that i just don't i i, I just don't know he just doesn't look like kind of the same guy so um i that yeah, but there's a reason why I'd be on a minimum and for a minimum signing, fine. No, no real issue, real issue with that. Boston could use another uh, forward in the mix if, if that's where they want to go. Now, we talked about this a little bit before we came on the show here, Keith. Um, I think it's worth mentioning. Kelly Oubre Jr. is still out there. Yeah. And he's a, he's a forward that, in theory, should be in the mix with all of these guys. Why is he not? Yeah, I talked to a team uh, this morning, actually, that said they, they'd they reached out, just kind of keeping tabs and, hey, where are you at? And the message they get back was, we're just going to kind of wait and see where everything lands after this whole, uh, you know, these trades play out. And I think that's kind of where we're seeing guys like Kelly Oubre, Christian Wood, a couple others are just kind of, all right, hey, if this team does a three or four for one trade, they've got an awful lot of roster spots to fill. The money's probably the same just about everywhere for these guys. They're probably mm-hmm. getting minimum deals, maybe, maybe, maybe a part of an exception, but probably a minimum deal. So if it's a minimum deal, then you're talking about fit, chance to win, chance to play. You know, ideally nice weather, right? Factors in for sure. some guys. Yeah, you know, where do we want to go? So I think that's what's going on with Kelly Uber Jr. is if if I, if all my, if all that's out there for me right now is minimum deals, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna hold on and then. Hey, I can pick a spot where I can go play. Because what we see, like with Dennis Schroeder, you play well enough, you parlay that into a nice deal for yourself the next year. And that's you know kind of where I think, think this one may head. I think these guys, Ubre, Christian Wood, they're they're just circling the Miami Heat right now, waiting to see yeah. if if those minutes open. It's more than just roster spot, it's minutes open yeah. up yep. um with that team. And then they'll they'll jump on board if that's the case. And if not, you know, I talked about this with Yovan Buha like a week or so ago that they're like in, in the case of Christian Wood specifically, he's waiting to see does Yus- Yusuf Nurkic get added into a Lillard sure. trade going to the Heat? And if so, he's not going to be as interested in going to Miami. But if he doesn't, then he probably winds up landing there. So, all of 
the dames of our lives, it's holding up a lot in the NBA right now in terms of how these other players that are still kind of out there are, are treating their own free agency right now. But again, the urgency is coming. Training camp approaches at some point. Either the player is going to say, well, I got to sign something in order to get into camp or teams that are sitting out there waiting are going to say, hey, you got to make a decision or we're moving on to somebody else. That it's all it's the as with each passing day, we're getting closer and closer to these things coming to a head. Yeah, I would also add in too, because obviously I think you're right. The Heat are a big one in the mix of the Clippers too. If the Clippers have to do like a three for one type of trade for James mm-hmm. Harden, then that probably opens up a spot there where you can say, hey, I could probably play. I play real minutes uh, for that team. So uh, absolutely, because that's it, right? It, it, they can get a minimum deal anywhere. It's just, you know, am I going to actually play and have a role and have a chance to play well? Well, then let me kind of pick my spot. And nothing wrong with guys waiting it out once you get to this point. It's, mm-hmm. you know, might as well, you know, land where, where it's going to work out best for you. All right. Finish things off. But a bunch of players that, that signed on. Uh, Moses Brown landed with the Blazers. Scal Labissier, there's a blast from the past to the Kings. And Mac McClung signs with the Orlando Magic. So these are not, you know, bit huge you know stop the presses type signings or anything like that but these are these are depth pieces um scal in particular jumps out he's a big man with a jumper uh, i believe he had a showcase or maybe that was harry giles that had the showcase in vegas yeah it was harry giles harry giles it was but but scal has a, got your former kentucky big man mix that's that's what it is I well, i'm sorry that's not right harry giles is a duke guy that's Never right mind. see see it's, 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 see, it's been long enough yeah. That, that since we've actively thought about these guys that we were flip-flopping them and getting them all mixed up. But yep. <laughs> in any event, um, it, it, you know, there's some interest here. Mac McClung, obviously the, the dunk contest King. And uh, look, these are some depth pieces for these teams. Yeah. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on him. Moses Brown was already with the Blazers uh, briefly on a two-way contract mm-hmm. a couple years ago. So they have some familiarity there. Could be an idea of, Hey, we may have some center minutes if we can move Nurkic mm-hmm. uh, in a Damian Lillard trade. Uh, Scalabis. Yeah. Yeah. He's just going to go into kind of a competition. Remember the Kings also signed Nerlens Noel. There's our Kentucky big man. There you go. Right. Um, but signed uh, Nerlens to come in. They, they uh, bumped uh, Namias Queta up to the, uh, um, active roster um, versus the two-way spot, so we're standard roster. Um, so those guys are just going to battle it out probably for one big man spot um, at the back of the Kings bench. And then Mac McClung, my guess is when this one comes down, he didn't get more guaranteed than what would allow him to play in the G League because I think what we're going to see is he he lands in the G League ultimately, and that's probably where he'll be. And what will happen for him um, is uh, – how do I put this? For him in the G League, it's – or for him with the magic rather is they've just too many guards in front of them already. Mm-hmm. You've got Markel Fultz, Gary Harris, Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, and then they just drafted Anthony black. Like he's just going to find it hard to crack that roster. So my guess is probably get something that either can be converted into a two way or he gets uh, dropped into the G league. And that's, you know, fun. I'll, I mean, they moved the G league team even closer uh, to where I live now. It used to be in Lakeland. Now it's only over in Kissimmee mm-hmm. in uh, Osceola County, which is like, you know, 20 minutes from my house. So like I can uh, shoot over there and watch games. And if it's Mac McClung, he puts on a show. He's fun to watch. So, you know, I'll probably pop over there even more than I, I went down to Lakeland. All the more reason to go check out some G league basketball. Uh, Keith, I think that about does it for today's show. We got through a lot. There was a lot of stuff yeah. for, uh, for August. I guess we did have an extra day built up there, but still a lot of stuff. Do appreciate everybody for joining us. Make sure you're a, a subscriber here on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that like button for us as well. And then over on the podcast side, give us that five-star rating and review over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to podcasts. Till next time, everybody. See ya and stay safe.